Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Tukes Banusenova and I welcome you again on my channel I Dr. Tutsi. Today I would like to continue the third part of the topic corneal physiology and I'm going to continue with decement membrane and endothelium. Beginning in utero, at the 8-week stage, endothelial cells continuously secrete decement membrane. The anterior 3 mm secreted prior to birth has a distinctive banded appearance when viewed by electron microscopy, and you can see it in this slide. But decement membrane produced after birth, which is a posterior part, is unbanded and has an amorphous ultrastructural texture. The anterior bandant region, which is A in this slide, is secreted by endothelial cells during fetal development and is more highly organized than the posterior region, which is secreted, as I said already, after birth. So the P area uh, of this picture in this slide is a posterior part of the cement membrane. And here also you can see the information about uh, thickness at birth, childhood and at adults. Uh, and you can see that after birth, the thickness of the distant membrane is increasing until approximately 12 microns. Here in this slide, I would like to continue with distant membrane abnormalities. Due to aging, there can be focal overproduction of basal lamina. And when there, there, there is a thinning, stromal thinning appears in the cornea, the estimate membrane may bulge forward and this forms to hassel henle warts. So here in the slide, for example, these white dots on the cornea are this exactly a clinical picture of hassel henle warts. The next example of decement membrane abnormalities is corneal guttata. Decement words of central cornea is called cornea guttata and they associate with increased permeability of endothelium. And the last example of decement membrane abnormalities is posterior embryotoxone. First of all, when we talk about posterior embryotoxone, we have to know what is Schwalbe line. The peripheral rim of the cement membrane is the internal landmark of corneal limbus and also it's the anterior limit of drainage angle. So this, uh, this is a definition of Schwalbe's line. And Schwalbe's line may be hy hypertrophied in congenital anomalies and appears as a visible shelf on gonioscopy and this called posterior embryotoxone. And here in this slide with arrow, you can see the clinical picture, how uh, it looks like. Decement wound healing. There is no special steps uh, in decement wound healing. There are only two steps uh, during the, when uh, after traumatic interruption of decement membrane, endothelium spread itself, trying to cover the surface of the defect. And at the, same, at the same time, it synthesizes uh, fresh basal lamina, which is structurally almost identical to normal decimates layer. Endothelium. It's a single layer of hexagonal cuboidal cells, which are attached to uh, posterior, posterior aspect of decimate membrane. It's an, uh, these cells are neuroectodermal or in a region, um, and corneal endothelial cell production is relatively fixed. Endothelial cell density about uh, 6,000 cells per square millimeters at birth, and later, later until uh, 11 years, the number of endothelial cells are decreasing. Uh, and the normal range in adulthood uh, of the endothelial cells is about 2,500 cells per square millimeters. And if cell density falls up to 500 cells per square millimeters, corneal edema develops and, of course, uh, corneal transparency will be reduced. Uh, I really like this slide because uh, this slide showing from left to right both cartoon representations, which are top, which are on the top, and real images um, 
of the corneal endothelium. So real images are on the bottom. Uh, you can see it here. With, uh, so for example, uh, we start with a normal uh, endothelium cell density and uh, under the same photo we can see the normal microscopic presentation, so how it looks like. And then uh, we can see the cornea with low density of endothelium and the cornea with uh, corneal endothelium with polymagnetism and pleomorphism. Here on the last photo uh, we can see that the plus indicates a larger cells and the minus indicates a smaller cells. And the numbers, which you can see here, for example, 5, 4, 7, 6, uh, they indicate the number of sites forming the cells. And also, additionally, I would like to add here that at birth, cells are about 10 microns in height, and with age, they become more flatter, uh, and they, uh, the height of the cells is de decreased, being decreased until 3 to 5 microns and uh, approximately 18 to 20 microns uh, widths. The anterior cell membrane uh, of endothelium cells, as I said already, is attached with decimate membrane by modified hemidesmosomes. And the posterior cell membrane, apical part of endothelium cells, facing uh, to anterior chamber with 20 to 30 microvilli. So they are participating in transporting function, uh, function. Lateral border of cells, they produce some kind of a complex of connection between neighboring cells. And here in this slide, you can see a 3D view of deep cornea, uh, showing part of endothelium, distant membrane and stroma. A few words about nutrition of endothelium. Endothelium gets its nutrition and oxygen from ecthos humor and essential nutrients they pass across uh, the surface of endothelium cells to supply the cellular needs of all the corneal layers. And in this slide uh, uh, there is an information about fluid regulation of endothelium. So the clearance of stroma is maintained by the main, um, main uh, let's say, like uh, functions of endothelium. The first is the, that endothelium provides a barrier function uh, to the ingress of salt and metabolites to the stroma. And another function is that uh, it's actively reducing the osmotic pressure of stroma by metabolically pumping the bicarbonate ions out of the stroma to aqueous. And the last slide about endothelial repair. Physical and chemical damage to endothelium results in loss of cells. Neighbor cells, they move over to fill the gap by sliding process and enlargement of cells uh, occur. Thus, after injury, the endothelial cell density is decreasing and the cell area increases and the cell height decreases. So this means that when there is a damage of endothelium due to sliding process, the height of the cells is decreasing and the cell become more flatter than they were. Uh, by trying to cover the damaged area of endothelium. And this was the third part of the topic, corneal physiology. It was a brief uh, information about the physiology of decimal membrane and endothelium. Uh, hope you find this uh, information uh, informative for you. And now we're going to continue uh, with the next video, with the shooting of the next video, where I'm going to talk about the main tips for young ophthalmologists who wants to start fellowship abroad. Thank you for watching this video. I'm wishing you a good day. Bye.